All right, we're in a little bit of a holding pattern when it comes to continuing forward with manufacturing the skull mount for Rex. I'm waiting to get the 3D printed skulls back that I have out right now being done that are going to be my models to use for that head assembly construction, that upper and lower jaw construction that I showed you the other day. So what we're going to work on today is going through and starting to tinker with and figure out a way of designing this piece of the spine to both be able to be articulated and self-supporting. Right now, without the aid of the stop, you can just see that Rex's head is just going to fall, 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 fall. That problem continues even if I get in here and apply more torque, right? Even if I tighten this joint more, I still can't get enough clamping force to keep this from rotating because of the weight of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on that bracket assembly a little bit today. Uh, we're going to try a couple of different ways of tinkering with it and we'll see what works. I'll talk through some of it, other parts of it we're probably just going to show. Okay, so the first thing I've done is gone ahead and unplug Rex because we want to start manipulating stuff and I've got this bundle of wires coming out. So we don't want to damage any of that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take apart this joint right here and see where things go. As I mentioned before, these are just through drilled with a single 632 machine screw and some washers. All right, so now we've got body section free from the tail section. We can just go ahead and set this aside. I'm not going to be changing the spine right now, so the only thing that I'm going to work on is this mounting segment, this, this method of joining and articulating. So we're going to go ahead and get this other connection undone, and then we're going to fiddle with what we can do to support this a little more strongly. So just for illustration purposes, this is the way those joints are currently designed. It's this through rod of 632 machine screw, a washer, this articulating plate that we've built, connecting plate, and another washer. And you can see that just from the force that was applied that this guy is pretty bent. And these are pretty flimsy, right? They're just that really thin sheet metal that we were working with the other day. So the next thing that I think I'm going to try is increasing the size of the connecting rod. And I think we're going to go ahead and go up to a quarter 20 size. So given the fact that all we need to do is go through one spine segment, which is just a hair under three quarters of an inch thick, we need to go through one spine segment, we need to go through the required washers, nuts, and whatnot. I think we're going to go ahead and make this initial piece of quarter 20 rod I'm thinking we're going to go an inch and an eighth in length will be plenty. Plenty of ways we could go ahead and cut this rod. Uh, I find the easiest is to just use a simple little portable vise. We're going to go ahead, get a mark on where we need our thread to be. And this is just to eyeball it. So I've got that mark there. Let me take my Sharpie out of my mouth. So 
There's our inch and an eighth mark. We'll get her secured in vise. All right, we're secured in vise. I'm just going to use a hacksaw. We could do this with a grinder. We could use it with a thread cutter if you actually have a, uh, a pair of thread cutting tools or a set of thread cutting tools. You can do that. However, I find that just getting a hacksaw in there works plenty fine. And there we go. Inch and an eighth piece of threaded rod. All right, so we got our rod cut. What we need to do is just clean up that little bit of a chip that we left. We're just gonna try and get that to break over so that we can get that off, clean that thread off. And then we can use a quarter 20 coupler or a nut, you don't need the coupler, you could just use a regular nut. And just chase this whole thing through to ensure that we didn't damage our threads at all. With a small piece like this, a regular nut's probably better, but this will work just fine. Okay, now because we had originally done this with a 632 screw, I need to go ahead and embiggen the hole in the spine and I'm gonna go ahead and tap it so that our threaded rod can become fixed in there. And we'll see how that goes. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just using our, our old hole as a mark, we're gonna go ahead and Now, I can already tell just because of the way I did this that I'm gonna have some problems. Um, this piece of pipe the drill angle through is a little bit skewed, which is where some of that scoliosis is coming in. One of my next steps is going to be to take and replace this with a piece that I've drilled on the drill press that's a little bit better. But for the time being, we'll do it this way because I want to work on one specific aspect of getting this right, and that is getting the spine segment to be more stable. So go ahead and tap this. The ability to tap and use a die to thread metal is really an amazing one. It's worth the 17 bucks to go get a set of a simple tap and die set at you know Home Depot, Harbor Freight, any of these people. High-end taps are great. High-end dies are great if you are doing production work, if you are going out and making your living doing this stuff. But if what you are looking to do is tinker in your garage and make some things, don't go out and get the highest and best stuff for the first time. Eventually what you want to do is buy the best tools at the price point that you can afford that you will use regularly. So I'm going to get this to thread in, he says, hopefully. And then we will see whether or not my cattywampus angle is going to hurt me at all. It does not. So now you can see we're, we're threaded through on both sides. However, our inch and an eighth measurement is probably going to be too small because I did not account for the length that we need for our bolts and nuts and washers because I didn't account for the difference in size, the difference in thickness between my 632 nut and my quarter 20 nut. So I'm going to go cut another piece of quarter 20 rod. This time I'm going to make her about three inches and we're going to go ahead and get that in place and move forward from there. Much better. Okay, so we also need to embiggen the holes on our 
joint. Rather than cutting a new joint right now, all I am going to do is just reuse the piece that I've already got. Because the first thing that I'm kind of testing out here is just whether or not the increased rod thickness will take care of us. So, I use the same drill bit that I used for the trap tapping. We'll just ream that out a little bit. Clamp her down. And now with that, go ahead and hit our rough spots. A little bit of a file, just to make sure we don't have any real terrible burrs, because we don't want to get tore up. Once again, we're going to use a washer, our bracket. Now these brackets, because they're tapped, they're not tapped, they're just drilled, but they're drilled at exactly the same size as the rod. So these will almost screw onto the rod themselves. Okay, so we're loose enough there that things can kind of free float. We'll go ahead and get our other washers and our nuts put on. <laughs> okay, this is would be why you would go ahead and disconnect your wires before trying to drill through. There's always time to do it right the second time. Or we can go to the drill press and just do it right. That's the other option. Probably no need for cutting oil, but why not? Should have plenty of room for that piece of rod to slide through now. Clean up the uh, outside face a little bit. Make sure we don't have any furs. That guy is going to slide through nice and easy for us. Now we'll go ahead and bolt her together. Because we're going to bolt into this existing section, we have to do a little bit more fiddling. Because we've got to get through our connectors.
and we can start to see about giving this guy a little bit of tension. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. We at least now have the ability to get this guy to hold a position. You can see that with a little bit of movement though, everything loosens up. So we're still not quite where I would like it to be for a for the actual joint, like for what we're gonna actually expect this, this joint to do. But at some point these joints are gonna need to articulate as well. Um, there's going to have to be servos and stuff. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to stick Rex's head back on uh, without the wiring because I got to rewire anyway. Uh, we're going to stick the head back on, cut the wires loose, stick the head on, and see if it'll hold the weight. Get that tightened down enough. Okay. All in all, it looks like without a whole lot more work, we've figured out that we can get Rex to take a more vertical body angle. How did we do that? We went ahead and tinkered with this single joint in the spine. And the only thing that's changed here is the size of the threaded rod that we're using to hold this joint together. So, what this gives us a really good indication of is that if we wanna make Rex's other joints self-supporting, that we're going to have to increase the size to at least quarter 20 and go from there. Now I say at least quarter 20, the truth is I did not try to upgrade this to a 832 or to a 1032 size. I could have hit those intervening steps in trying to figure this out. However, seeing the difference in going to a half inch on the, the femur, I'm sorry, on the, what would be our, our hip joint, sort of where the, the femur mates to the hip socket in the pelvis. Uh, seeing how much stronger that made the pelvis overall, I think the choice to jump into the quarter 20 was the right call. So, I've got my work cut out for me. I am going to be going through and remachining all of Rex the skeleton. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get Rex upgraded to a little bit better joints all the way through. Again, we're just going to continue to use our tiny aluminum plates for the time being. The only change that we're going to make between here and next phase in our process is taking all of these joints all through the leg, all through the spine, up into the arms where I already started a little bit and upgrading them to a quarter 20 piece of threaded rod and we're gonna redrill all new limb pieces to function as spinal segments. So, I got some work to do. I hope that was useful. I, I know it was a bit of tinkering and a bit of fiddling, but that is really how this process works. It's how taking any concept that just exists in your mind and that you're going to start to bring to fruition how it how it happens and, and i hope that for some of you you find that useful and we'll take it from there cheers